when you were under the age of 18, a student, you just left secondary school, yes. and you hadn't yet gotten into the university. Yes. You say something happened to you, yeah? Something, something very painful, you know, beyond painful. Can you sh tell us what that is? Tell me what that is. It's, um, I have to say, like, this is the first time I'm going to be coming out, like, public to discuss this yeah. with um, someone. Yeah. It's only my family members and definitely my husband that knows about it. Um, okay. Um, mm. Take your time. I was still in secondary school and um, I came home. Meanwhile, then I was staying in Ilori with my parents. I was born in Ilori. Right. You know, I went to my primary school in Ilori, but my secondary school, I went to Gifted School Academy in Suleja. Right. This was still in Kwara? Both, both no, Suleja and Ilori in Kwara? No, Suleja is Niger State, Niger State. close to Abuja. Right. So, um, I returned home for a particular holiday mm -hmm. and then my sisters, they all told me, oh, they are now going to a particular, like a club, right. you know, but it's not a church, right. it's a club. They, right. they were doing the services on Saturday. It was more like um, a gathering of young people right. to just come and dance, praise God and listen to the word of God. That was how they explained to me. And um, the kind of person I was then, mm -hmm. I was this kind of person. I was the vice president of the fellowship in school. I believed in tying head to church, you know. I didn't really want anything hip hop, you know, jumping, that kind of gathering. So immediately my sisters told me that that's the kind of gathering you meet a lot of people, you meet prostitutes that have given their lives to Christ, you meet cultists that have given their lives to Christ. I was like, isn't it scary to be in the midst of all these people that ah, I don't think me I want to go. I just like, so I just come, come, come. I reluctantly went and um, I saw the different people that were there. It was clear I was the youngest. Mm. So I was always pinching my sister because the way they were dancing, I felt, no, no, this is not it now. This looks like a club, you know. But then it was like, this is like a new way of reaching out to people to mm. know God. Mm. So I, I was there. They said time for first timer to stand up. Mm -hmm. I stood up and I introduced myself. My name is Busola Mukpiton, da, 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 secondary school. Then I now shipped it in that um, I was actually, I explained my journey there, that I didn't want to come here. I thought people would be like on serious set of people. You know, how can people be praising God like this? Mm -hmm. But listening to the word of God, you know, seeing people talk, it's really amazing. And I'm so excited that I came here. I was really, really a bold child, like I could speak up in any gathering. So um, after the meeting, that was where Pastor Biodon preached, Biodon Fatou Inbo, he preached. After I finished preaching, he came to meet me after the service, after and the he meeting. He the general overseer of the Commonwealth Zion Assembly. Yes, Koza, yes, is right? the senior pastor there. Yeah. But then the, it wasn't Koza. Yes, it, it was, was um, called Divine Delight Club. Right, right. Yeah. It wasn't yet a church. It wasn't yet a church. Right. It was just like, um, and he wasn't married then, right. but he was engaged to so right. his present wife. Right. So um, that's how he, he came to me and he was like, such a bold young lady like i've never seen someone like this you know it was like wow you need to keep the fire that please can you do something in um the next meeting before i go to school he asked when i'll be going back to school mm. so i said ah, okay what can i do that i can sing i'll just try to sing not like i can sing very well he said oh yes that's great that um he plays the keyboard that um he could he would help me out, would rehearse together, things like that. So I told my sisters and um, I felt, ah, 
why do I have to be part of this your club thing? Mm. I don't want to be part of it now. Mm. But my sisters told me that I should not be <coughs> too judgmental, mm. you know, mm. because my thinking of Christianity then was a bit different, was kind of like solemn, you know, that was how... What they call deeper life. Yeah, sort of, you know, that's how I was mm. then. So um, I decided, okay, I went to, I can't remember the particular day of the week, mm. but my sister now took me to his house then. Right. He was living with his father. Right. The wife right. too there will be there sometimes, I guess, because that particular day she was there as well. Right. So I entered the when living room. When did your sister room. take you to his house? Because I was meant to do rehearsal. Right, for this thing that he meant Yes, for, for that um, mm -hmm. next meeting yes. that I was meant to sing. Yes. So she left me there, entered the living room. He was already seated with um, the keyboard. Right. And as at then, I didn't have a phone, right. no mobile phone, mm. even my house, we didn't have any landline. Mm. So mm. it was more like, I've already told you this, just work it out, you mm. know, come mm. at that time. Right, right. So that's how I rehearsed and... Um, so this was his father's house? Yes, right. his father's house right. in the father's living room. Mm -hmm. So he asked me what kind of song, I think I even remember the song, you right. know. What song was it? I will serve you because I love you. You mm. have given life to me, something like that. So mm. I'm not a great singer. Mm. So I sang it my way and then it was like, oh great, we has, I went back home. And the next meeting I did the song. And as I was singing, someone came out to give his life to Christ. I, I got to realize the guy was actually even in cult, you know. So it was really a very um, touchy. Where did the person come out of? So from was, the you, congregation. So okay. Like, so you so you you went to his house. You did this rehearsal. Yes. Then you did the thing. The next meeting. Yes. Right, I right. sang the next meeting. It wasn't the Sunday. It was a weekday. no Saturday. Right. Saturday. Right. It wasn't the Sunday service. Right. Just Saturday gathering. Right. Saturday evening. So when you're singing, this person came to give his life. To yes. Christ, right? Yes. So um, after after the program. Everybody, different people walked up to me mm. that is like, you have that gift, that calling, mm. just keep serving God, mm. you know. Different people encouraged me. It was so clear to everyone that this girl, she's a very, very young girl, mm -hmm. you know. So um, he walked up to me and he said, wow, just keep the fire burning. That's Biodum. Yes, right. that's Pastor Biodum. Yeah. He walked up to me and he said, keep the fire burning that I'm going to give you um, books right. and cassettes as you're going back to school, mm -hmm. just be focused, don't listen to people, mm -hmm. you know, things like that. And he gave me books. Mm -hmm. It wasn't on the spot there. Right. I don't I don't remember whether he sent it down, but I, I got books from him right. and cassettes. It right. was cassettes then. Right. So um, audio cassettes. Right. Right. So I took them back to school. I even showed um, my friends in school. Mm -hmm. I, I, gave them the old gist about this new place that my sister took me to and you know that's how it was and um, by the time I finished secondary school mm -hmm. I returned back to Elorin right. and um, I was still contemplating should I join this church you were not still fully comfortable yes with it. yes because I went back to school, the kind of fellowship in school was totally different from what I experienced during the holiday. Mm. So it was more like I was living a dual life, you know. So I really wanted to come in terms with the particular belief that I want to flow mm. with. Am I going to be like the FCS, the way I was in school, mm. or I'm ready to join this kind of new environment? So I told my sisters, and they were like, see, this man is warded, he's now in church, it's Commonwealth of Zion Assembly. Right, by the time you came back from school, it was yes, already a church. it was now already a church. So that's how I joined the church. Mm. When I joined the church, I joined the choir. Then we were at, um, a, we're using a particular mall, Adamabola, or like that in Ilorin. Right. There was a supermarket downstairs. So I was part of the choir, I would go for my rehearsals, everything. I just wanted to serve God mm. because um, my background is, um, I'm from a polygamous family mm. and um, seeing some things play out in the family, I didn't want my life to be like that, mm. like, more or less like as the, when I was in secondary school, as I was coming out, you know all this sent forth that they are doing for you and they're telling you, you are going into the world. 
you know i was beginning to get scared of this world like so mm. i was having that mind that i want the kind of world that mm. will make me happy mm. and my since i was already a christian i just I was just like hold on to christ that's mm. all so i wanted to serve in a church you know just be zealous for god the mm. way i was already zealous in school so i joined the choir and um I wasn't talking to anybody. Mm. I would just do my own thing. My sisters were involved in self-fellowship. Right. We would go for evangelism together and... Um, but you were still in your shell. You were still afraid of this world that people, that it told you to be careful about. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And again, you know, because it was a bit difficult for me to really integrate myself into the church right. because of where I was coming from the FCS was FCS totally the different yes. yes what's it what's FCS not even fellowship of Christian students Sense, something right. like that yeah, yeah. you know so um, I joined choir and then one day they told me oh even sing your song now lead I couldn't really sing very well but mm. I sang and um, one particular day Pastor Piotr now came to me he was like ah, that you don't like to talk, how are you? You know, you just look at me, how are you? Hope you're good and everything. I just be like, I'm fine. And then um, he started coming to my house. Right. And all of us in my family, we were so active in church. Right. When I mean extremely active in church, more like the Amukitans are so passionate about Koza, mm. so passionate about Commonwealth. Anywhere we'd go, we'd just keep dragging everybody to the church, mm. dragging everybody, just come to church, come for self-fellowship, things like that. Mm. And we were going through our own personal family issues. Right. Quite all right. To, did it have to do with the fact that it was a polygamous family? Or yeah. What were the issues? Yeah, my, my father wasn't always around. Right. You know, and then right from secondary school, we're already right. facing financial issues. Oh, right. yeah. And um, while I was in secondary school, there were times I would go to school without um, provisions, right. but nobody knew. Right. I was very good at living, coping with things, mm. not discussing with people, you know. I just needed to let me study well, come mm. out of school, enter university and get a good job. Mm. You know, I really, I was, I really wanted to be there for my mom in particular. Mm because I just felt um, she had gone through a lot, you know, things like that. Um, this particular time in church, he came to meet me, that's Pastor Biodo. And then he said, um, I noticed you're always all by yourself. So you came to meet you in church? Or at yes, okay, right. like after a fellowship. Right. right. Like, um, you're always all by yourself, mm -hmm. things like that. Hope mm -hmm. you're good, mm -hmm. you know. So I said yes. So he said he was going to come to my house right. the next day. Right. Had you ever done that before? No, right. no. Wait. So it was because he said he, you wanted to find, I guess, wanted to find out more about why you were quiet. Yes, he just wanted to sort of know more about me, things right. like that, because we were always going to church. I guess um, people sensed something was wrong, like in terms of family, maybe we didn't even have money, things like that, but we never opened up to anyone. We, we would just take care of our own business. There were days we would go to church, no food, but then we'll go back home and sort out issues, you know. So um, that the next day, he came to my house in the morning, and then my mom was in the kitchen. So I told my mom that, ah, my pastor is here. He came in, he greeted my mom, and then I told my mom that, ah, my pastor says he's going to buy some things on Taiwo Road, that I should just accompany him, you know. So I remember that particular day, my mom was like, ah, Sola, which one is this one now? She said it's in Yoruba. Mm. I was not like, ah, mommy, it's my pastor now. I'm like, there's nothing, you know? So my, um, my mom said, okay, oh, no problem. Oh, greeted him. As in my mom saw that, oh, he left with me. Mm. So he was driving a white Mercedes Benz here, like the old, I don't know the model, mm. but old white Mercedes Benz. And that was where we sort of, started interacting and um, started talking like you don't say things you're always quiet what's wrong you know so he was talking I want to be a spiritual father to you so at that point 
even though in my world I'm always very mindful of people around me like when I was small because um, when I was like um, 10 one of my dad's drivers just looked at me one way I slapped the man like why are you looking at me like that right. you know so immediately I was about to just put up a guard you know but then he was just able to like just break it mm. I just want to be like the father somebody you can always interact with mm. and then really I didn't have like a good relationship with my dad like, he was always traveling you see he was yes, not always at home yes yeah. at home and then my sisters were all, were all busy running their own lives and um I had my fears, fears of all this thing of ah, you're about to enter university. There's a whole lot for you to know about this new environment. Mm. It really felt, I felt stifled in a way, you mm. know, and mm. I was a bit glad like, oh, I have someone to interact with. So it wasn't that particular conversation that made me to open up to him, but it was more like within me, I just felt relaxed, mm. like, okay, 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 you know. He just talked and he went to buy what he wanted to buy. He dropped me back home. Then after some days again, he came to my house that, okay, he was going, because the church was about to move from that particular location to another location that is like Wonderland, that's where they call it. So he would go to that site to go and see. So he took me that particular day again to go and see that place. We just talked that he's doing this. He just wants me to be talking to um, someone. And meanwhile, all these interactions, he asked me one time, do you have a boyfriend? I was like, oh, no, I don't have a boyfriend. I'm a virgin, like nothing. And he was like, oh, that's really good. That just keep yourself, you know, don't listen to all these people, even all these church boys and church choir members. Mm -hmm. So um, it was good. It felt like good advice, yeah. definitely. So um, felt like someone who was supporting you, who was yeah, helping, you know, listening I, to you, yeah, and, and concerned you. about yeah. me yeah. as well. Yeah. You know, so um, it sort of just I became relaxed, like nothing, until um, a particular day, which was a Monday. I remember the previous day was um, a Sunday service and um, because there was no no telephone, no mobile phone. So before GSM? Yes. I didn't know and um, it came to my house. My, meanwhile, my house then was, the gates opened, the living room is where you just knock the door and mm. someone will come downstairs and open the door. And this time, my mom had traveled with my younger sister. It, it was just myself and one of my elder sister that was at home. And my house, like a duplex, was a duplex. So big that if you're in a room upstairs down, you won't know what's going on downstairs, things like that. So I came down normal. Normally, the way I come down, it was like 6.30 to 7. It was pretty early. Right. I was still in my nightwear. I was right. wearing a gown my nightwear, and I had the knock, who is that? Ah, Pastor Piotr. I was first of all like, I couldn't say anything, like, what What's it this time? So early? But um, immediately I just opened the door. He just pushed me. He didn't say anything. He didn't, um, he didn't utter any word. He just pushed me to one of the chairs in my living room and I saw him like he was removing his belt. So I was like, what? He just said, keep quiet, do what I want you to do and you'll be fine. So at this point, really a whole lot was just going on in my head because it was more like someone that I had put up here that I felt was really, really concerned about me. I had already filled him in the place of my, like a father that could speak to me, you know, guide me. He was there about to do something I did not believe. And then when I was just about to react, 
it just covered my mouth. And um, when it covered my mouth, it was just like, Usola, listen to me and you'll be fine. Just do what I want you to do. I didn't struggle. I didn't struggle. I just um, left him and um, he brought out his pennies and I was wearing a nightgown. I was wearing pants, pulled down my pants and that was how he, he found difficulty to enter but he just kept, I was like grunting, I would cry, I would, I was just doing a whole lot of mixed feelings and all that and then um, he eventually penetrated, even blood dropped on the floor. And um, at that point, he, he finished what he wanted to do. He had an orgasm and he zipped up. He left me there. I just sat on the floor and he went out. So when he went out, sorry, just hold on a minute. Sorry, take your time. Take your time. Take your time. <sighs> because the thing, this particular time, as it looks like um, something that just happened, like an event, but a whole lot are damaged within me. As in, I don't even know how to define it, a whole lot. He entered his car. All I saw was he came back and he brought Crest. What is Crest? Um, Toothpaste? No, no, a drink then. Mouthwash? No, a well, drink. Like, like, like a soft like, drink? Yeah, like a right. soft drink. Right. It was Crest. It had um, green content. Right, right. I do yeah. remember. I think I remember. Christ. Yeah, yes. so it was already opened. Right. He had opened it and he just poured it in my mouth. Why? I mean, I, I, I don't know. So he poured it in my mouth and I had to just be swallowing it as he was pouring, swallowing it. And he finished and um, he was now tapping me like, you should be happy I'm the one that did this to you. So, and then he left, he said, I'll see you, he left, the, but I should be happy that, that he's the, the one, one that, that did, did it to you, that he's a man of God that did this to me. You should be happy that the man of God disvirgined me, sort of. Okay, sorry, let me be sure that I get this chain of events, and I'm sorry, because this yeah. is obviously a difficult thing. Yeah, it's fine. So, so you're saying that Pastor Biodo Fatoyinbo, and he was a pastor at this time. Yes. Of, he has set up this church called Koza in Yes, Illinois. he was married. The wife he had was given married. birth. Oh, and he had the child. Yes, the wife had given birth to Shindara then. Shon, oh, right. A very little baby. Boy. And you, you were in the choir? Yes. That he, he had, he'd like to be your spiritual father? Yes. And so, based on that, he would come and visit you to help, you know, yeah. encourage you and support you. Yeah. And then one morning, Biodun Fatoni will comes into your house at yeah. dawn at 7 a.m. Yeah. And without saying anything to you, when you open the door, yeah. he f pushes you yeah. onto a chair. Yeah. He tells you to shut up. Yeah. And then he rapes you. Yeah. Okay, and then he, so he says, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about this, but yeah, I just, it's fine. I'm sorry, and, and then he closes, he tells you to, he shuts your mouth, literally, Yeah. and then does, pen, you know, do, yeah. does this, Yeah. and then Finn, and then ejaculates, has an orgasm or whatever. Yeah. And then goes out, mm -hmm. gets a drink, a, a soft drink, brings, so he doesn't say anything to you about, he goes out, gets a drink, yeah. 
And you were so, I couldn't, you were so overwhelmed, you couldn't even scream. You couldn't, you didn't even, you, you just, yes, it was, yeah, you were overwhelmed. Yeah, it was, at some point, I yeah. raised my voice. Yeah. But when he told me, it, and again, at that point, you know, when I joined the church, yeah. then, and my sister used to say, oh, he used to be part of a, a cult group, something. His sister mentioned it, that he used to be part of a Yes, group. and then each of you would mention it in some so messages now. Yes, like his testimony, how mm. God saved me, things ah. like that. At the moment, so it felt like thoughts. that was the person I was facing. Right. You know, mm. I, I didn't see him as the person that was encouraging me mm. as the father. I just saw him as, wow, wow, like is a mean person that he could just do anything, anything. to just yeah, so satisfy. You got, I mean, yes, yeah. you, were, you were frightened. I mean, yeah. that, would, that would be reasonable. Yeah. So he goes out, he gets this drink, he comes inside, he forces it into your mouth. Mm -hmm. And then he tells you, and he's just disvirgined you as well. Yeah. And there was blood on the floor. Yeah. And he tells you that you should be grateful I that he, know. as a man of God, was the person that did this that to is this to you. Okay. Okay. Where were your where was your sister at this time? <laughs> My sister was still sleeping. And um, apparently, I think that the night before, she went out with her friends because she was my sisters would just go out. I was the introvert kind of person. And <laughs> I was just scared. I didn't even know what to tell her. Instead of me having time to even cry or anything, I was there trying to clean floor. I was quickly going to remove my pants. Then all I remembered was I ran to my mother's room. She wasn't around, so I locked the door and did like I was just sleeping. Why? I just felt there was a scripture I used to have in my head then, marriage honorable, bed undefiled. And um, watching how my mom and dad, how they were, I didn't ever want to lose my virginity before marriage. That was like one of the things that I felt, according to my faith then, that if I'm able to keep my virginity, I'm going to have a fantastic marriage. That was my revelation then. So it just felt like I had lost every single thing. Everything that I had hoped for was all gone. My dignity, I felt it was all gone. My sisters would call me aside because they knew I was a virgin. And they would say, oh, Busola, keep yourself. Oh, don't answer people, you know, we so believe in you. It was more like I was the flower of the family, like that precious. Yeah. So in short, I just felt like yeah. my glory was gone. Gone. So that was the first thing that hit you. This man just took my glory. Like it was totally gone. I was on the bed. I would cry, go into the bathroom, pour water on my body. I think I had my bath up to 10 times that morning. Because I, I just felt I needed to be cleansed, mm. go and wash up, wash up. I did not come out till like 12 noon. As at that time, I, my other sister was back. I couldn't see anything. Was back from where? Like she she went out. Oh, she went out and yes, she came back. Yes, overnight. Like she didn't sleep at home. Right. Oh, yeah. okay. Oh, so she didn't sleep at home. I thought you said somebody was sleeping upstairs. Yes, I had two sisters right, that were okay. around then. Right. Yes. So one sister had gone out. Yes. And came back the next morning, but the other yes. one was sleeping upstairs. Yes. Yes. How did he know that nobody was? Their parents were not. Their mother wasn't home. How could he have known that he could do this? How? Yeah. It was. You know. I guess by the time he was already coming to my house. He already knew how my home was functioning. You know, oh, this person is not around. Because my mom and my little sister mm -hmm. traveled that time. Right. So it was just myself right. and so these my knew. sisters right. that were around. So nobody else was around. Right. And you he know. knew the way the house was big and all of that. Yes. So it, it wasn't even something, he didn't do it in, in a way that it was inside the house. It was just the living room. 
because it's a duplex. You open the door, you see the living room, then you have to step down to get to the dining area. So it was just, you open door, it was just on this side. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't, there was no distance. Mm. Wow, okay. I'm sorry about this. Um, <laughs> I've so over the years. Yeah. yeah. And this is the first time you're talking about this to anybody apart from your family. Yeah. Like it's, um, you know, I had to really come out to say this because um, I was already hearing things. Right. More like another narrative uh, was being said. Uh, and I've kept quiet over the years. Uh, I know what I've personally gone through. Uh, I know how I've like struggled. You know, when you're just struggling, you're just pushing your head anyhow, like, no, there's something about me. You're trying to figure it out, you know, you're not just able to get yourself. And thank God I have people that are working with me now, that are able to help me through healing process. Mm. And I'm seeing a way that I can also help others, mm. you know, people that are silently going through this kind of thing, because mm. the pain is not what you can define. The hurt is not the kind of hurt that you can say, ah, I even know how to come out of it. It's more like you're struggling. It's a struggle. When I mean it's a strong struggle within. You're trying to still see yourself with that high esteem, but you're not seeing it. You're trying every way. Sometimes you try to get it through validation of people. It's true what your friends, sometimes it's true a lover. So, you know, you, you're sort of in a situation where you don't have control of things. You're just depending on everything around you. So. Yeah, yeah, I, I see that. Um, so I want, to, I want to stay here where you are now and then before going back into that, that, mm -hmm. that, that part, however painful it is. So you said something, you said he, is, he has been spreading or there has been yeah. a spread of a different narrative. Why? Why? Who is spreading this narrative? Why would anybody spread a narrative if you've not talked about this in years to the public? Yeah. What, what's, what's, what's going on with that? It's um, social media. Yeah. Like, I think my husband put up some posts right. and then he right. mentioned from Ilori to Lagos right. to, you know, Abuja, Dubai, right. you're doing this. Your husband is Timmy Dakolo, the yes, singer. Yes, Timmy Dakolo, the yes. singer, and right. he's aware of, of everything he's that happened. Yes, yes, he has always been How aware. How long have you guys been married now? We've been married for six years. Six years, right. Yeah. yeah. So he's been aware. It's not like it's a new thing. But then when you keep hearing news of this person doing this, mm. this person doing that. And By this, you mean abusing other women yes, and girls? Yes, abusing other women, right. other teenagers as well. Other teenagers, because you were yeah, a teenager I was, I was a teenager then. I had not even entered school. I was still trying to do my IGMB to mm. find my way into university. Mm. So, um, so, I, I do, so I found out about this a week ago, about your, your husband's posts. Yeah. Um, and apparently he came out, he didn't mention the yeah, name. Yeah, he didn't mention me. So he came out to talk about this person who has been hurting mm -hmm. women in, through the church. And apparently he had talked about it last year, last year without mentioning names. Yeah. So this obviously had been something that had been deeply painful to him. Him, I, yeah. So based on what you were saying, because he spoke out, you know, and the people that he was talking about, which is Biodu yeah. and his people, yeah. knew that they, Timmy was talking about him. Yes. So they, be, so you were saying they began to spread stories about you that you heard about. Yes, yes. I, I think in a way they had already even um, spread some stories what, what because kind of the thing? first time yes. when it happened, yes. you know, first time when Timmy spoke. Yes, right. when Timmy spoke up, someone was saying it like another pastor was saying it that oh he said you guys had an affair. Ah, so you had heard the pastor say to your husband yes, yes. that Biodun said he had an affair with you. With me. Now, sorry, but you were under 18 at this time. I so was under 18. If he had an affair with you, he was having an affair with a minor anyway. Yes. 
and this is a, this is obviously because I've heard this part of the story. This is obviously a well-known pastor, even you know, though we'll not mention ex the pastor. Exactly, name. it's just a thing of that actually made me even before these stories. I started hearing stories. Yes. I already lost all the credit of men of God trying to do like they are listening to you, mm. like they care about you. Mm. Since then, I've never worked in a church. Mm. I've I just go to church anytime I want. Come out. Mm. I'm not part of any group. It's b about my relationship with God. Mm. So, so the first time Timmy spoke out in, in the social media without calling Beard's name, he began to hear stories. That was the first time this stories then you got heard yeah. from this big pastor. Yeah. And then Timmy couldn't Timmy spoke out again this yeah. year. Did something trigger Timmy speaking out again this year? There was this, um, I was just there in my studio and I had Your phone calls. Studio. Yes, my yeah. photography studio. And I had phone calls, you know. I eventually I picked up, ah, Busola, don't check online, no. Something is going on. You know your truth. My sister called me, then she was like, you know your truth. A friend just called and she said, imagine people saying rubbish, someone saying rubbish about you on social media from where now? That was all, I just don't mind all these people. I was like, what, 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 what? So I went online and I saw it. You saw what? I saw the message. The person put, oh, um, go and ask your wife. The person responded on right. Timmy's post. Right. Go and ask your wife, your wife that was sleeping around with pastors in Ilori. Right. Go and check the DNA, spending church money. All right. that really, it um, triggered a whole lot. Like, right. I felt like I've been bullied enough. Mm. I've, I've kept quiet mm. for a very long time. Mm. You know, even when I heard there was this main story that came out previous year of a lady, you know, I didn't put my mouth, you know. I just kept quiet. And me keeping quiet, I felt like I was just losing myself. Mm. Like, um, you're losing yourself. Someone is bullying you you're not getting the opportunity to speak up, to say something. DNA of my children, that's, in short, to just say, oh, she's promiscuous. So, so these people were, so this lady, one of these messages that your friends actually looked at was somebody questioning the paternity of your children. Exactly. Be because of what Timmy had said. Had said. And Timmy never mentioned me. The they mentioned you. You. It didn't mention me, right. I meant so. And so whoever was responding, these people who were responding, obviously knew about you and about what Biodu had exactly. done with you. Exactly. And were trying to manage this situation. Exactly, exactly. So um, at that moment, see, I had a very long silence moment. When I mean, I just sat down. I had to tell my clients at the studio that, sorry, I just need to sit down. I went to the toilet and I sat down for almost 20 minutes. What should I do? I'm like this quiet person that I'm just getting to connect with myself. What's all this? Mm. And um, at that point, I started telling myself, I think you have to be courageous to come out and say your truth. So before these accusations came, you were not going to come out and say anything about this? Yes, no, I, was just, just to... I was just quiet. I was just quiet, even when um, church members, some people would ask, ah, what even happened now? Koza, it's a church nothing. Member, Koza, church, Koza members. church members, especially the early church members then. I would tell them nothing. Oh, I just felt like, you know, we'll get to that part where I would say how I came out of the church yes, and so, things like that, yes. you know. But I was I'm going to ask again, even though, I, I mean, if, if this, if, if what you say or call is an irrelevant question, but mm -hmm. Why did Timmy speak out again this year? What triggered that? You have different people right. that have reached out to him. Right. More like right. you are the voice that can help us. This uh, person is still doing this. Right. So because he had spoken in the past. Yeah. And happened like you say, this building continues. Yeah. You know, to people say that building continues yeah. to have affairs with teenagers are below 18 yeah. and above yeah so people come to timmy to tell him about what this happened yes and timmy is triggered again yes because this thing that happened to you that you know about is not happening to other younger women yes exactly and that's actually the point why i i decided to let me come out yes 
let me come out and let them know that you're not alone in this. Yes. Like it's happened to me. I'm walking through my healing process yes. with great people. So it's a hard one. I don't know. It's yes. it's really hard. Yes. But then, thank God for for a great husband. I would say mm. some people are, are are still single. Some people are even probably still struggling in their marriages because, mm, because of things of this. like this. Okay, let's go back. And I'm, again, it's a difficult thing, but it's necessary to do that. So, Bildon does this, mm -hmm. and does this to you, rapes you, mm -hmm. allegedly. Yeah. And um, you go into the room, he goes home. Yeah, he went home. And then what happened? That's it? That was on a Monday, and um, at that point, I was just scared of him. Scared of him? He's scared yes. of him, yeah. And um, I love my family. I don't want anything to happen to anybody. Because he's an ex-cultist, as yeah, he has said. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that image was more in my head than, than any. Pastor. Yeah. So um, the next, the like the Bible, I still had to go because my my sisters were cell leaders, so I still needed to follow them. Uh, Busola. They're coming to church. Yeah, let's you had to go. follow them back to the church that Bjorn was pastor of. Had you told them about what happened? No, no. Huh? I didn't tell them. So, okay, so this was the same day? No. Or this was days after? Yeah, days after, so but that same week. week. That same week. So you'd week. been raped by Bjorn. He had gone. You hadn't shared this with anybody. You were yeah. still dealing with the fact that as a young Christian girl, yeah. for whom virginity was a big deal, you just yeah. felt that somebody had taken something very important to you. Yeah. You'd not found the words to tell your sisters yet, but you had to follow them back to his church. Yeah. Right. So I went for the midweek service. That was like the worst Did he preach ceremony. on that day? Yes, he did. Yes, he did. And um, it was about grace. It was Gra about grace. Grace, grace, the grace of God. <sighs> you know, like no matter what you do, the grace of God has covered all your sins, like God doesn't even see any of your sins. So um, I was there trying to understand what, what is this all about? What is this? In short, that day I just attended church because I attended, because I had to attend my sisters. And after service, a brother came up to me, one of the protocols. And then he said, um, Pastor Modeli wants me to come and help at their house. Who is Pastor Modeli? That's his wife. That's Bjorn's wife? Yes. Bjorn's wife asked you on the week that this happened to come to the house? Yes, told I someone to come and tell me that uh, she would want me to come and help because she has a baby right. to come and help at home. Has she ever asked for this before? No. None of my siblings had gone to their place to help. Right. So randomly... So, Immediately, really, yeah. I, I had to, I turned to my sister. I was like, ah, sis, I don't understand. I said, am I Omodo? Omodo in Yoruba is domestic mm -hmm. help, help yeah. now. Yeah. That's, what is all this? That was when she now said, ah, there is not a new thing, you know, that church members go to help her. Ah, right, okay. All right. okay. So, at that point, I was just like, okay, okay. So. Pastor Piotr now came. He just said, I'll, I'll be coming to your house when I leave to come and pick you. To come and pick you? Yes, to go it and was help evening. Yes, so I would sleep over. So Piotr, Pastor Mimbo, after doing this thing, yes. walks up to you in the church after yes. preaching about grace yes. to say he will come and pick you yes. to come and help his wife. Yes, that Pastor Modeli needs me to help. I went back home with my sisters. At that point, I was thinking, should I tell my sisters? Should I not tell? Should I tell? Should I not tell? I was just frightened and afraid. But in my mind, I was like, no matter what, Busola, just prevent anything like this from happening to you again. I didn't know how I was going to do it. And I still had to like, oh, let me respond like nothing happened. Because I felt, I was trying to keep my people safe. 
So after after like we returned home and he came, the wife was actually in the car with the baby and he came to come and pick me. He came to your house to come and pick you? To come and pick And he me. was alone in the car? The wife was in the car. The wife was in you so know, it's like after service, right. going so home, came so you both you. came so to pick me. So you me. from home picked me from home right. and then we went. They were staying somewhere in Songo. I'm sorry, right? I want to ask, I mean, I, I've, I work, I do work at Joy Inc. I yeah. know how trauma works, I know how this works. Yeah. Well, some people are not familiar, so I'm going to ask a very stupid question. Yeah, you can. This man just raped you. Why did you, why in God's name did you go back to his house? Nobody knew. Yes, but you knew. I knew. Yes. But I was totally afraid. I was a teenager. It's not like I have my dad was available that I would feel, and I didn't even have that kind of relationship with my dad, mm. that I would feel, oh, daddy, this thing. Auntie, I didn't daddy. feel like somebody was responsible for me. Mm. Mm. In, in short, it was more like him that I felt was responsible for, for me. For you. Like, I was beginning to see him that, oh, see, see, see the person that has been there for me. So it was more like my hopes were just shattered. Yeah. Yeah, Everybody know. trying to find out how to navigate their own lives, like that's how my family, you know, they were all trying to just find a way. Hey, my sisters, you know, myself and my sister were trying to enter university, but you know, they more like face your life, face your life kind of thing, face your life. There was just no other option. Yeah. You were frightened, you were, I was, you were frozen. I was, I was frightened, yeah. totally frightened, because yeah. at that point, like I said, I didn't see him as my pastor mm. anymore. Mm. I just saw him as somebody that mm. maybe the old side never left. You saw him basically at this point as this cultist that you had been told about. Yeah. So, um... That was how I went to do. I went to the house, and um, I was always carrying. Uh, I carried baby. It was late already in the night, mm -hmm. so his wife entered the room. So that Pastor Dilly entered the room, and um, I carried Shindara. Meanwhile, at home, I wasn't the kind of person that used to clean the house. Right. So that was why I was even telling my sisters, like, "You people are the ones that clean the house. I don't know why they." Di Pastor Dilly decided that I should be the one to come and help her cook and help her clean. Mm. That I'm not good at that. I'm just learning. Mm. You know, they know this girl just came back from secondary school. Mm. So how can she do all these things? But my sister just said, I'll just go and help now. Because, Pastor. People, because they yes. did it for people. He yes. called different people. Yes, he called different yeah. people. That wasn't the first time. So it's a strange thing to your sister. Yes, yes. So um, that day, that night, I carried the baby Shindara and Pastor Dilly was lying on the bed that was in their in their own master's bedroom. So um, she now said, Oh Bosala, have you eaten? I will go, I'm okay. I didn't bring any clothes by the way because mm. I didn't have mine to Stay have my bath right, change. Yes, just to leave as soon as you I would just sleep, wake up and go and do my own thing at home. So I carried baby Pastor Biodon walked in and he said, ah, I've cleared guest room for Busola. Busola should go and sleep there now. I looked at Pastor Dili. I said, Pastor Dili, you're the one that told me to come and help you with Shindara. I would like to stay on the bed with you. He said it again, ah, but why would you want to stay here when there's a spare room for you? That, that room was meant to be like, I think like, he cleared the room in short. You know, that you can go and sleep there. Because I already, meanwhile, by the time I walked in, mm -hmm. in at some point where I was just there alone, at home, came to me, you're going to sleep in a guest room and I'm coming to meet you there. Okay, all right. So, okay, I'm sorry. Okay, so you, when you came into the house with both of them, he found a way to corner you and yes, say and that he you said, sleep, sleep in the in guest, the guest room. room and I'll come and meet you there. <sighs> so, okay. so um, it was just let her sleep. I said no. He walked away again. I made sure I just carried Shindara. Like yes. she was a baby, really little baby then. 
So then um, she now said, okay, Busola, just help me. Let's lay the bed, everything. As we're about to sleep again, he came in again. As we're about to sleep in his wife's room? Yes. In the master bedroom? In the master bedroom. He came in again and said, Busola, he was just pacing the floor. Mm, pacing around. Yes. Yeah. Like, he came again. He should go and sleep. He should go and sleep. I had to just look at Pastor Dilla. I just looked at this. I said, please, I really need to sleep with you on the same bed. At that Pastor, point, yeah, that Pastor point. Modeli now said, Biodo, please leave her. She wants to stay here. Right. Right. OK. All right. So immediately she said that uh -huh. he went away. Right. OK. All right. And that's how she slept. I slept. Then I stood up and I locked the door, right. the room door. Right. And that's how that night was. Right, okay. I woke up in the morning and um, Emmy cleaned the house normally. It was already. I woke up in the morning and um, Emmy cleaned the house normally. It was already in the living room with Bible on his laps. And what? With Bible right, on, on his, his laps. laps. Yeah. Right. And then he looked up. I greeted him. He looked up. He looked down. Then he came to meet me. He said, nobody ignores me. <laughs> that he wanted, oh he wanted to have that. I knew he wanted to do something with me. And I made sure it did not happen. He just said, nobody. At that time, I was even in the kitchen. He just slapped my butt and he left. And I went to, um, I just did all the cleaning that I needed to do at home, there in their house. I prepared food. Another church member came and, you know, we finished all that. There was no time for me to go home. I told Pastor Dele, I said, I want to be going home now. Then he came into the picture. He said, um, then I'm going out. Picture. Yes. Then said, when he heard that you wanted to yes. go. Yes, yes. Okay. He said, I'm going out. I'll um, drop you off on the way. Okay. So I now told, I said, I'm, I don't, I just want to go all by myself now. That, oh, don't worry, sir. Don't worry. This whole thing is just tiring. Sorry. Try to be like a superwoman, superwoman, <laughs> all along. Like um, I don't like to remember these things. Sorry. In the way we can see men of God to just be mean. So I get this is very painful to go through, but um, you went to do this for other women who have gone through this or who are at risk of going through this again. It's actually difficult to say who have gone through. Who could have, Because yeah. it's more like it lives with you. Mm, right. So it's, it's not a one-off thing. It's not a one-off thing. So it's because who are going through it. Yeah, who are going through it. It's just like the level I'm at now, mm -hmm. that's not where I was years ago right. but it's all a struggle mm -hmm. you know that's um, poor self perception mm -hmm. you just look at yourself like you're worthless mm -hmm. 
you know when you when you visualize the image you visualize the everything that happens mm. it's it affects mm. you mentally mm. okay i'm going to ask another stupid question mm -hmm. but why like it's if someone did something so terrible why are you the one that feels bad about yourself <laughs> i mean <laughs> the way the whole thing changed after like mm. i will talk about it after he he came mm. when my brother approached him and he's there begging you know oh, right. yeah. yeah and oh, okay. you know yeah right okay yeah. so let's so that so that we, people can follow the trail yeah. so I, f I sense that i mean I, I, you've, you've I asked not to be told the story before the conversation because yeah. but then i sense that there is something else coming because yeah. he he say he said to you, I would take. First, he had said yeah, to you. Yeah, because that was um, the second time it happened. Again. So it happened twice. It happened twice in one week. In one week. That's the rape, but they only happened twice in one yes, week. Yes, in one week. So that day, I entered the car, the um, white band. So after you had said you were not going to go, he basically insisted that you had to go with him. Yeah, that he would the drop wife you off. was like, "Go now, Pastor oh, just wants to said, drop you." I was the wife like, didn't think to ask you. No. Why are you so worried about going away? She didn't. She mm. just said, follow Pastor now. Mm. Pastor mm. is going, just follow him, drop at the junction. Mm. So, because that was what I said, I would just drop at the junction mm -hmm. of the house mm -hmm. because there was, it was quite a distance to walk from their house to mm. where the taxi, you could get a taxi. Mm. So, entered his car with, um, there was a church member around then right yeah so you mentioned that the church member yes. had come in the morning yes so the church member actually just dropped off before we even got to the junction right and then he was driving i was in front he was the one driving mm -hmm. he just changed like he made a detour immediately so he dropped off his other church member he just changes the route yes after we advanced to another level like before we got to the main junction right where I could get a taxi. And then I was like, ah, oh, Pastor, go and drop me, go and drop me at the junction. Can I come down, can I come down? He was just smiling. And then it, he was just saying different things like, I am yours. You do what you want, what, what I tell you to do. And he just parked the car when he got there. In, in, the, in that, at that moment, my heartbeat was very fast yeah. because I knew something was, was about to happen yeah. again something was about to happen again there was nothing i didn't i didn't even think of violence i didn't think mm. of hitting something i didn't i didn't mm. think of that at that point he just he came down from his car and opened the door pulled me out this was on the main road Yes, somewhere with some. Um, nobody was there, right, not on the main road. Right, yes, right, entered the off corner of the main road. Yes, yes. We never even no. reached the main road. Ah, right, because you came from his house. Yes, so it was the we road never to, reached. Right. It was just the road to another place. Right. Anybody that knew Songo then was just full of bushes here right. and there. Right. Houses were just beginning to um, be developed there. So he just um, parked and came out, pulled me, pulled me. Wanted to do this to you in the house. You did not answer. And that's how he bent me over. He bent me over at the back of the car. At the back of the car, opened the door. At the then later on, put me at the bonnet, like my hands like this. Then later on, even just held my hands like this at the back. Held my hands like this. That I don't want to be killed. Do you? Just answer me. Just give me what I want. So, at that point, I didn't even do anything again. I just allowed him. So he raped you again? Yes. And he got up there. <sighs> and then he came. I was more or less like a slave, you know. So um, he did it there, he ejaculated and he put me in the car and started saying sweet things like 
Oh, Sola, I think I love you. Saying things, I didn't even say anything. I didn't say anything. He got home. He dropped me off. He said, you'll be fine. That this thing is not a new thing. I told his ministers then that he mentioned it that men of God do this. The minute is when he talked to his church, his fellow pastors. In yes, the church, later on. They said men of God do this. Yes, no. Okay. He told them because I told them that at this point he mentioned it that he was saying men of God do it. It's right. not a new thing. Right. And he still denied it that he didn't say that. But he said this to you. But he said it to me. That men of God do this. Men of God do this. I got wow. home. Right in front of my gate. I came he dropped down. you at home. Yeah, he dropped me at home. And I entered. At that point, I went to go have my bath immediately. I went to have my bath. I didn't come out at all for like three days. That particular time, I didn't go to church the, the Sunday. So he was getting like worried. I didn't see you in church. He came to the house. To the house. After he didn't see you in church on Sunday? Yes. Like, what happened? <sighs> What's this? You know? But wasn't this strange to your sisters? Why was this married man always coming to check up on you? They didn't. It wasn't strange. It wasn't strange because I mean, it I mean, was like it was our pastor. It's normal. It's, yeah. They call it visitation. Uh, yes, and more or less, we were very active in church. Yes, you know, right. even um, this infinity group, mm -hmm. the singing group. Oh, then, Oko, the singers, yes, yes, they used to come to Ilori then, right. and we would host them. The right. church. So you were a church, church family. Yes. So the church did not really have so much money to be able to put all of them in hotel rooms. Right. We would host them in my house. Right. We would cook for them. Even with the way we didn't really have so much money. Right. You know, we would just do, do it our, for them. Yes. I know how this thing is. And sometimes church. even the boys, they would, they would notice like, ah, what's happening now? Let's help you with this. Let's help you with that. You know, so it was more like church family. Mm -hmm. We were mm -hmm. very so mm -hmm. they didn't they didn't even think of it. Was it nothing that, strange about yes, this? Yes, like mm -hmm. he was coming to my house, and you know. So he dropped you off. I mean, he came back after mm -hmm. the service to find out why yeah. he was worried. Yes. And for your sisters, it's like normal concern. Everybody, but for you, you, we were all there. Yeah. We were all there in the living room, and yeah. they were just like, "Hope you're fine, everything." I said, "Okay, yes, I was fine." And then the next time, I was still contemplating how should I tell my sisters. Mm -hmm. The only thing that just kept me from telling them was, "This person is just acting nice." Mm. This person is not nice. Like, this person can do anything. I was just saying it. I was already saying it. Like, I don't think he's really truly born again. That's how I was saying it then. Because I just felt that you won't be born again and then you do this kind of thing. And it, it felt like he didn't have any remorse. It felt like he could go back to do anything, you know. So that's how I also just felt like he can come to my house, send someone to come and do something, come and kill or... I was just... I didn't feel safe. Yeah, there was no man. Yeah, yeah. No man. It's not like I had the covering of my dad, right, like right. somebody that could protect us. Yeah. And my mom was... I was all sold out to just be there for my mom. Mm. Like, I couldn't even tell my mom. And my mom and I, we sort of used to talk. I was like mm. the stubborn person that... You know, some things that were troubling her, she would easily talk to me about them, mm -hmm. you know, and I would pray with her and all those things. So all this, I was quiet. I would still go to church, come back, but then I now stopped um, being active in choir. I just told myself, on no account should you be with this guy alone. On no account mm -hmm. will you go to his house again. I was just trying to like.
give myself different um, things to avoid so I don't find myself in that state anymore. Mm. And then um, myself and my sisters would still talk around because they would they, they held my virginity like it was theirs. Mm. So they would talk around it. Hey, Busola, when you even have your first boyfriend, oh, don't do this, just continue. And I would still smile. But whenever we had such conversations, mm -hmm. I would just run back to the room again and cry and cry, you know. I traveled to, it was when I was in Lagos. I told one of my sisters, she was coming to Lagos, that, ah, please let me just follow you. I just want to come here to Lagos. She came to um, Lagos, I followed her. Um, I told her she was actually the one that came to me and then she told me she had told me about a dream before that she had mm -hmm. and that's I saw that something bad happened to you mm -hmm. that my sister is like someone that she dreams like she sees things either things that are happening to you now or things that will happen mm -hmm. So mm. at that point, she told me, she said, I had a dream. You were crying seriously. Mm. And I saw blood on the floor. And mm. I saw Biodo sitting on a chair. Oh, wow. She saw it in a dream. So at that moment, I was just, I was sort of like in shock. Like, I denied. I said, ah, no, no. The next thing, I just started because as at that time, that was the same time. I, the way it was, I was in Lagos, I was, it was night, I was about to sleep. I was now crying. Mm. Like I wanted to pray, but I couldn't pray. Mm. So she was passing by and she had been trying to tell me this because even when we were there in Lauren, she told me she, she, she didn't just have the dream, she mm. had the dream since. She called. She called uh, my sister at that mm. time to say, I have something that I want to tell Busala. I have something that I want to tell her. So it was on that very day that she just told me that Busala, this is it. Tell me what happened. Mm. I started crying. Mm. And I told her what happened. She started crying with me. She was mad. She was like, Bussola, we have to go back to Ilori. We have to go back to Ilori. So we came back to Ilori that week. My brother, my brother was in the um, University of Ilori then. Called my brother, called my other sister, because then I have three other sisters. One was in Kaduna doing her youth service, or Kano rather, doing her youth service. And this one that followed me to Lagos, she wasn't the one that was there that day that it happened I was sleeping. Mm. So that, that when we returned back, we told the three, um, the other two. Mm. My brother was angry. My brother took pocket knife, just dragged me, dragged my hand. Let's go to his house. Mm. We went to his house. Mm -hmm. Immediately saw my brother and I coming. Mm -hmm. He quickly came out of his house. Mm -hmm. I was like, Busola, Busola, what's the matter? Tunde was, my brother's name is Tunde. He was very mad. Mm -hmm. Just called him, I'm going to stab you. Mm -hmm. I'm going to kill you. What did you do to her? He was begging. He was like, I'm sorry. It's just the devil. I don't know. I don't know. It was just the devil. So at that time, Someone who was around, a church member. In his a, house? Yes, a minister, Wally. Right. That one is, is the pastor of, um, is the, the pastor of the branch in Port now. Now, right. Yes. Well, so this person is still with him? Yes, he's still with right. him. So, but as at then, he wasn't a pastor. He was a right. minister in church, like prayer minister. Right. So they took, we, they, he now said we should come, come to my house. Myself and my brother went back home. Then they now came to my house. Mm. That then they called another minister. So he started talking. He, he came with another minister? Yeah. That he was really sorry. He didn't know what just came over him. Like, he was really sorry and all that. I was there. I couldn't say anything. It was just like... He, 
no devil like it was the devil that he didn't have the intention of doing that the other and a, a minister in his church come to your house to meet you and your brother. That means this yeah. minister knows about what had, that Biodun had had sex with you. Like yeah. Even if he didn't know that it was a rape, yeah. he knew that he Biodun had sex with something. a girl who wasn't yet 18. Yeah. So they come to your house and they talk to you and they say it's the devil. Yeah, right. we were just outside. He didn't even enter. He enter the you know, house. my brother came out, I right. came out. So um, they start saying it's the devil, this like that. Meanwhile, the minister then, which was um, Wally, Wally Sueto, mm -hmm. and there's another minister, Flo. Right. And Flo actually happens to be my, my second cousin. Flo is the second cousin. Flo is, used to be the pastor in, in yeah, Lagos. Yeah, yeah. Is the he pastor. still the pastor in Lagos? I think so. Right, okay. Really, yeah. right. So, um, but it's not like we have that close relationship. Yeah. So he came with two ministers, or he came with one? Yes, I think Wally came by himself. Right, so he came with Flo, yes, yes. then Wally came and joined yes, you. Yes, yes. Wow. So um, that's how they were talking. I'm so sorry. I'm this. I wasn't really even listening to everything because all that was just on my mind was I can't get back my virginity. Like it's been done the way I think right now. You don't know my state. So I just said, I told my brother then, like, I want to leave the church. Mm because I wasn't even listening to the word. Mm -hmm. And I told Wale, I told him I want to leave the church. So Itu, when he heard, Who he actually, he no, eh, no, Who that's um, Wale, Wale, Wale right. Sueto, right. the pastor in Pazakot now. Right. Itu, he was like, ah, this kind of thing, this, no, 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 I'm going to leave the church. He was right. the prayer minister then. Right. It was the one like the fire brand, you know. So he was like, no, 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 I have to, that ah, you can't even tolerate this, that this is just too much. It wasn't like maybe they even heard my narrative mm. or they knew how, they just knew something it happened. happened. Yeah. So, um, Wally said that and then he was like, please, please, I'm so sorry, you know, knelt down, I don't want you guys to leave the church. If you leave the church, what would people say mm. you know things like that and um, the word of God that you listen to the word he was still talking about like is the word of God that will help you so um, I just kept quiet at that point and after a while he left I I entered the house I entered the house they were still Lifting having there. yes they were still having conversation it was not later on I um, I was chatting with them. Um, I came out. Mm -hmm. I was talking with um, Minister Wally. Right. Then so he was like, oh, Pastor, Pastor is really sorry. And um, it's like, he really needs their help. Mm. Like so basically, he needs, Wally was saying, this man is a sick man. He needs help. Like, yes. That he doesn't feel this is the right time to live to leave him. Oh, this is not the right time for Wale to leave him because yes. he needs Wale's help. Yes. Right. Like, you know, he was the prayer minister. So right. maybe he felt he could praying pray could, him. yeah, like just be there for him. And then it, he was talking that it's just time. You'll but be fine. And just, who will be fine? You will be fine. Yes, that I'll be fine. That That's, you will be fine. Yes, that I'll be fine. <laughs> that you should just look at mm. him like he's a weakness, like something. It's that you should look at it as if Biodun raping you, you an under 18 year old is a weakness. Yes. Right. And you know, it was just an act of the devil. I was just nodding. I was just nodding. Yeah. I was just nodding. And later on, after they all talked, you know, so I, I can't believe this happened though. I can't, you know, they all express themselves differently. Mm. At that time, Pastor Biodun had left. Mm. So I came went back home and um, I know the next Sunday we didn't go to church it was like we resumed we went back to church after like two weeks you it, went back to the church yeah why well they came as in it was more like constant visits to us mm. like uh, the Amokitons you people are really really and your mother didn't know by my this mother time. didn't know and we all agreed, like, we weren't going to tell her. So, but your sisters knew? Yeah. And your sister, who was in Lagos, 
you know, the one who had, I mean, again, how did, like, so, and, this, and this is a lot, this is a yeah. lot, and it's a lot for me, so I can't even imagine for you, but yeah. I'm just trying to understand, so, when your sister had the dream, like, this is a very random dream, what made her walk up to you to tell you this dream? There's something. Yeah, it was it's a very that weird particular dream. day. I was, I was, I was, I was in the house, about right. to sleep at in Lagos, night. Right. Yes, in Lagos, because see, every night wasn't the same night mm -hmm. anymore. Mm -hmm. There are times I would cry, cry, cry. Sometimes it would be like I would almost sleep off in the bathroom. Then I would get up. I was just trying to adopt in my own way, you know. So that time I was in Lagos. I was actually just kneeling down. And it was like I was praying, but I wasn't praying. Mm. I was just crying, crying, crying. I mean, well, this was night, late in the night. So my sister came out of our room, of the room where she was staying, and she saw, she noticed she was just hearing sound, sound. Why? I was just saying, why me? Mm. Why me? Mm. That was just the question I kept asking, asking for a very long time, because I felt I was I was faithful to God. Mm. I felt I had led many people to Christ, mm. even though I was young. I felt I had done a lot for God, you know, mm. back in school. I would even do like a deliverance session for people. I felt I was too committed. I had time every 4 p.m. every day, once it wasn't church day, I would always be reading my Bible or praying that even my, my family members knew. They would just say, don't go near Busola, or she's in that room praying. I was reading one book, Conquering an Enemy Called Average. You know, I, I felt I had done a lot yeah, and yeah. I didn't expect that to happen to me. Happen to yes. You. Because I was just thinking God probably didn't just love me as much as he loves him. You know. God didn't love you as much as he loves Biodum. Yes. Right. So I was just saying, why me, why me? And my sister oh. entered and she saw me crying and she said, Stop, stop praying. This is not prayer. Mm. Mm. That I've been sensing something is actually wrong. She didn't mm. even start to disturb me that I should tell her. Mm. She just told me I had one dream. That was when she now told me that dream. A dream. Right. That's this, that's. I just started crying because it was more like just confirmation. Yes, yes, yes. So it was that point that I told her. Right. And that's how we came to Ilori and she was the one that told my other siblings. I didn't call right. them. So you went back to this church in two weeks because they had been coming to meet you, to beg you yes. as committed members of the church. Yes, no, not people to... I Meanwhile, well, I didn't go back because I just wanted to, oh, uh, committed members. I thought I was, let me protect my family. These mm. people don't understand what's happening. That was my goal. Maybe they saw it that, oh, Busola, yes, oh, she's really zealous for God. That's why. It wasn't that. It was fear. It was fear. So I went back and but I didn't join any workforce again. Mm. I was just there. We just be involved in the self fellowship with my sisters and, you know. Little by little, I just kept rejoining. People even knew, like church um, choir members, mm. some would walk up to me, why are you not in the choir anymore? I told them, you know, I was just struggling to sing. I still kept it because they told, they told me that, please just hold it, don't tell anybody, yeah, sure. you know. So it turned to a thing like, protect your pastor again. <laughs> Jehovah. So I, <laughs> Personally, it just felt like what was happening to me, which people did not know. Mm. I didn't have any form of self-esteem anymore. Mm. Because it was more like I was saying God as God, so you have favorites. Okay, so you actually love men of God even more than anybody else. Mm. All that was just going on in my mind. So at that point, my Christianity began to that fellowship with God I was having 
I wasn't having it anymore. Because God hadn't kept his part of the bargain as far as. Yeah. So mm. I, I just was just doing things really just sake and things like that until um he did one program and he told me, he walked up to me in church and he said he's doing this program for me, like so that it will be part of the healing mm -hmm. to get me. But one pastor, Kayode Oji Sesson, I could remember that thing of like, you know, just preaching. He preached about bondage no more, that it was, you know, it's also something he's fighting. Like the pastor said there was something he was fighting. Yes. What was he fighting? Pastor Biodo, I don't know, like maybe fighting sin or right. fighting. So, so you this know. session is to help him overcome this bondage. Yes, and also there was a session like for broken people mm. if you've been abused. I even came out when that pastor Kayode was preaching. I came out, you mm. know, prayed, I was crying. I came out, prayed, went back. That's, that's how it was. I just was just there yeah. until someone walked up to me mm -hmm. and the person like, oh, I like you. I want to ask you out. I didn't know, like, prior to that time, it was already telling the different people, maybe someone, and he used to say it in church then, if you want to enter any relationship, mm -hmm. make sure you tell your pastor, you know, like, they must sort of agree to it. You know, like, that was just the order. So this person did not tell him, mm -hmm. but the person that walked up to me right. did not know the person was actually his cousin. Okay. That's Pastor Bioda's cousin. Yeah. And that's how he walked up to me and was like, he used to see me in church. I'm just so, you know, I stay on my lane. And we started talking. We became friends. I didn't know he had gone behind me to even tell him, like, don't get close to this girl who, like, ah, the girl, maybe she's, she's not ready for all this, her mind is this, you know. He just said it in his own way, but he did not say what happened. How but it sort of it? discouraged him. I eventually went out with the guy. Right. So he told me. Ha. Huh. So, yeah, so um, that's how we started talking. And I told him, I held everything, but just like, this person now is my first and is going to be my last. Like, right. I was yeah. ready, this is the person I would mm -hmm. marry. So when I made the decision that I was going to date him, I now told him, like, there's something you need to know, and I want you to help me. I need to come out of this church. Come out of this church? Yeah. Because I wasn't listening to the word. I was just going to church, just like, almost like wasted times. I used to only enjoy prayer sessions that were led by the minister mm. then. But every other thing didn't speak to me. So um, he, I told him what happened and immediately was like, no, 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 no. By the time he pulled me out of church, came out of church, he said, first of all, you're not going to that church again. Was it like two days after or so, he now went to church. I did not go because he already said, you're not going to that church again. By the way, the guy is late now, so mm. I got me so rest I in peace. It. He walked up to Pastor Biodo and he told him that I know what you did, you know, that they needed to see. So Pastor Biodo came to his house right in front of the gates. I was already coming to this guy's house mm -hmm. and I met both of them talking. So as they were talking, that was when he told him, don't ever talk to Busola again. When you see her on the street and you're driving, just pass That's by. Fine don't, you know, interact with her. And he agreed. And I felt comfortable because this person too was ex-cultist, like ex-cult member. Right. So, and he's also more like a pastor now too. Right. So I felt like, ah, this person can protect this me. This person can protect me. So that's why I came out of the church. I was so relaxed mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and I joined Winner's Chapel. You joined Winner's Chapel? Yeah. So you didn't leave the church? You didn't leave the church? You still kept going to church? Yes, just, I another, just church. another church. Okay. Um, yeah. Something you said about um, just losing your self-esteem. I do remember a few weeks ago, you were a guest on uh, a handle um, on a social... Uh, 
the yeah. new site, Olori Super Girl. Yeah. And I mean, again, I found this out when we were doing the research before this interview. And you said, I remember the exact moment I lost my voice or something like that. My I remember confidence. when I lost my confidence. Is this what you were referring to? Yeah. And you have, did it come back? Did you, has, has it come back? I don't know how to, I don't know what to ask, but do you, have you, since that moment, and this was, you were, you were 16, 17 at the time, or? It's more like fighting. Like, the way I've been is more like, I'm just fighting through. So since that time, you've still been fighting yes. through? Yes. It's not, at some point, it's affected me a whole lot. Oh. I didn't even know that was actually the bedrock of, of issues that I had. Everyone I did, I just felt like at some point, oh, this person doesn't love me, Joe. It's not real. I dropped off. I would just leave. And then I, dis I just decided men are just to be treated in a very harsh way. Mm. Like, just do. I started feeling like I needed to be inflicting pain mm. on, on men. Like, unfortunately, they were innocent, you know. But I, I was also feeling like that was the way I felt I could get my power back. back. I was really just thinking because there was nobody to walk me through anything. It was still more like go and listen to the word of God. And the word of God sort of looked vague. Mm, mm. wasn't applying to my state. You know, it was just more uh, pray this. I would pray. I won't feel better. Mm. I would, you know, it was just more like, see, all these things that people are saying, let me just know that I'm not worshipping idols. But then, it in terms of this it, one, okay. it's on my terms. It's mm. based on how I want to do it, you know. So mm. it's, it's affected a whole lot. That's why did it affect you for so long? Why? I mean, why? Again, I do, have an ex I do have experiences with people who dealt with trauma, but just for the people who are watching, why? It's, 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 it's more than a decade. I didn't actually know it was, it was still affecting, affecting you. me. It was just something happening. I did not know. You know, because mm. after it happened then, and okay, I was already dating this person, mm. and then I felt like even this person was sort of taking advantage of some things mm. because of what he knew was happened. Right. You know, so you were feeling unsafe, just generally. You couldn't yes. trust yes. your experience. So, luckily, I would say luckily, both of us now broke up. I had to leave the relationship. Right. And I left. And the moment I left, I just felt that thing of, you have to own things now. Right. More like being in charge of this relationship right. world or so whatever. They, don't have, they can't exercise this power over you. Anymore. Yes, yes. Like, I don't know what the intentions, because unfortunately, things mm. went sour to mm. in that um, relationship. So it's, it was a mindset that yeah. I built over time. Yeah. I did not yeah. know, really. As a coping strategy for yes. this thing that you dealt with. I was still, I, I, when, I, when I relocated, I, I worked in, in, I was in school when I graduated and I came to Lagos. Me living my life normally in relationships, there were things that I would, I would do and the person would say, this looks so absurd, why are you doing this? I didn't know, like, maybe it was triggering something from the past. Mm -hmm. I just used to, I didn't know I had mm -hmm. issues. Mm -hmm. I never saw a psychologist, mm -hmm. I never saw any professional. So it was more like walk mm -hmm. yourself through do the this. process. So I, it was all stumbling blocks, rise mm -hmm. up again mm -hmm. and, you know, just trying to find yourself. That was the thing. I was just trying to find my voice, mm -hmm. find myself, feel like I'm living mm -hmm. again. Mm -hmm. you know, so it's, it's, it's really like just two years ago yeah. that I started connecting Dealing back to it. myself. Why? How, what, what, how, why did you start connecting back to yourself? It's a lot of after some things, you know, the way I would react to things at home, the way I would feel bad, like my husband mm. could just make simple comments about something mm. i would interpret it the next another way mm. that is entirely different and he would look at me like you have a problem what's mm. wrong what with you wrong? what is you said this and you're already you know i would already interpret it so mm. you think i'm useless so you think i'm you know because that was mm. 
feeling. Mm. I felt incapable. I, I just felt I was worth, worthless. I felt, you know, so I was, and I was still struggling to tell myself, you are special. You are special. You are special. But some little things he would just do would just trigger those things, and then I would now be there trying to find my way. So it was just this time, and um, I just told him, I need to know the bedrock of things. Like, this is not me. Mm -hmm. This is not me. Like, who am I really? So that's all that healing process just started as a result of me saying, let me even get to know God Ooh. for who God really is. Not the God that I hear that they preach on pulpits. Not the God that, mm -hmm. you know, other people talk about. I want God, and I pray that prayer to God. I say, God, I want to feel you in my life. Like, let me know that you are real. Mm. You understand every single thing I have gone through. You must just help me out. So it was more like that time I had come to the end of myself. I mean, there's a lot to ask. But two of the things that I've heard said in the midst of the research about this is that but quick, let me talk. I mean, a few years ago, there was a big deal about Biodun and a young woman. Mm -hmm. um, um, it was a big national scandal, and he had to respond yeah. to it on the pulpit and etc. etc. And I'm sure you you heard about this yeah, before I did. this. Did you know that any of this was still happening with yeah, this man? We were, and people? <laughs> We're beginning to hear different things. things. Because you were from Ilori, so yes. you, 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 yes. all the Ilori, communities. Ilori is a small town, yeah. and then it was more like everybody knew everyone, you mm. know. Mm. So we're hearing things, a whole lot. Mm. And I would just tell myself, I'm not part of that church again. Mm. So this is not your business. You know, so it's not my business. Yeah. I have my own issues that I'm trying to deal with, mm. you know. So even people would come, like a whole... Plenty of church members would come talking about, ah, we heard this, we heard that. I would just smile. Nobody heard, nobody. You heard your own story. Yes, I never told anyone. Even some were my friends in university and they were now going to the church. Right. There was a particular lady, she was now complaining of what someone else said. About the past. Yes, past. about um, yeah. Pastor Biodo. And I was just smiling. I said, then leave now. That was just all I said. Yeah. I just leave, leave. So there are constantly stories about him harassing, abusing, and soliciting young women. Yes. So, mm. um, but I never felt the need to to speak up. To speak up, yeah. you know. I just felt like that was what I felt like. Let me just leave him Get to away God. From these people and yeah. And and his wife never reached out to you. She never asked any questions. She, she never. never called me aside to say, mm. Busola, what happened? What? Is, yeah. what Again, yeah, doing research for this, you know, I did talk to members of the church, rank and file. What did you think about these allegations about the first, the big S.A. Walter story? Yeah. And, um, and you know, the two things I heard, one was, and again, this is by no means a representative sample of the entire church, it's just random members. I heard was one, um, women are always throwing themselves at pastor. Mm -hmm. So actually, He's the one that is having to deal with all these advances. And two, that he's a human being. <laughs> human beings make mistakes. I mean, they don't know. I mean, this is the first time I couldn't tell them about your story or anything I'd heard. But they've never heard about a rape, or, yeah. or at least in the popular imagination. Yeah. What do you say to these two things? One, that you know, he's a handsome, powerful, wealthy man. And as a pastor, women are always throwing themselves at him. And, and then again, as you we were talking, I just needed to say, you know, the one of, um, like, he gave me money, I was spending church money. Yes, you mentioned that at the beginning. Yes, there yes. was no, there was no, the church didn't even have enough funds. Because they were eating from the, bringing people to come and eating we from were, this house. Yes. There, were, there was even, I remember a particular time that um, my sisters, we sort of even hosted them, himself and his wife at our house and I can remember how we struggled to sort of just you know put money together just to make sure that you know they they had a good meal mm -hmm. so there was no time that they really knew what was happening yeah. to my family yeah. it was when he now became close to me mm -hmm. you know like more like a spiritual father I knew and there spiritual was no time 
after it happened that he gave me money, church was giving me money, there was no time like that. Mm. And in any case, you left the church uh, soon after, so you know you didn't have any interaction with. Him. Yes, at all. Okay, um, I know that after this happened, and I know that uh, um, your husband showed me one or two messages. People have been, which is part of the reason why you said to speak out. People have yeah. been sending him the most alarming. Some of yeah. things I've read yeah. have blown my mind, yeah. allegedly, but still blown my mind. Yeah. Um, what do you feel when you hear these stories? I've heard of people who've had to have abortions, who've had to leave the church, yeah. who, there's another story of a young woman, allegedly, who, he also did the same thing, you know, I don't want to call, obviously I can't call names because it's her story to tell, m march up to in, into her yeah. house in, in the morning, just like with you, and according to the recorded message I heard, she was saying, you know, she, thank God she was just a sharp warrior or something girl that didn't wow. open the door you know and so there's just this multiplicity of stories that are in timmy's dms whatsapp phone it looks like an enterprise when i that hear has been those stories on. like it saddens me and um it makes me to just feel like does he not know the ripple effects of these things he's doing hmm. how is seriously damaging these people damaging their lives I mean seriously because I know I've gone through it mm. or I'm still walking through it mm. you know so and at some point I was even telling my husband I feel like maybe I, I, I should have come out like I should have summoned the old courage then mm. in Ilori to really come out mm. you know mm. and say, say stuff yeah but that's not that was also part of self-blame like yeah, when exactly, i hear some because, stories yeah, now but yeah but it's not your fault yeah, obviously not yeah, your fault exactly, in any way because we're dealing fault. with your own yeah, issues yeah well. yeah so i needed to get to that place i think i've gotten to i've advanced mm -hmm. in a way so that's got, yeah. why i can actually sit Share down here and be now. having conversations with yeah. you because i know i mean even in the yeah. process we've been doing some pre-conversations, just asking you, are you ready? And I've seen yeah. you break down, just yeah. imagining doing this. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 you know, people, would, it's more like you become so vulnerable mm. and um, it's a state you don't want to be in. It's really a state you don't want to be in. And um, I'm just thanking God I have, I have um, a great husband. He's been right? a hero. I don't know what to say. He's been a hero. So I'm just imagining ladies that are there, they don't have anybody. Yeah. 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 You know, it's... Yeah. I don't know, he should just be sensible. <laughs> like, I don't know what the issue is. You are not the only pastor. But pastors, I do know that some big pastors have called Timmy, maybe not you, I'm not sure. Basically, to say, look, we know this happened, mm -hmm. you know, but he has been punished or something, or, you know, I've heard stories and I don't know how, you know, true this is, <laughs> that, I mean, at, at least one big pastor, and I mean a pastor of a big congregation says, look, you know, he's confessed, he's asked for forgiveness, he's been suspended from the church for a couple of weeks, and I know that one of, the, at least one pastor, according to your husband, has reached out to Timmy to say, look, you know, what can we do about this? You so know? now, based on, based on all this, yes. is the conversation not tilted to Protected the him. man of God? Yes. yes. I'm not hearing conversations around the, the people. People that he's allegedly abusing, yeah. You understand? Yeah. I'm not hearing conversations around the people. So it's more like the conversation is always around the person. And why has You're it protecting. Yes, yes. Please continue. Like you're protecting, you're protecting this, this person. person. Yeah. But if you can if you can make him yeah. to stand up and let him identify because you don't we don't even know what has happened to some. Yeah. And if you actually call yourself like a pastor, yeah. you are not a pastor to pastor yourself. You're a pastor to, to feed the sheep. To feed the to sheep. Help. And yeah. you know that this sheep they are actually they always say the church is for the sick people. Yes. So do you now leave them, they're already sick, you send them away being sick? 
Is that a good place mm -hmm. to be in? Mm -hmm. So it's just conversation. If you if it keeps being, it's it's looking like you're you're all protecting this, this person. Man at the expense you're of protecting this, other this person of God. at the expense of these vital souls that are actually dying on the inside. Yeah, dying on the inside. Because it's really something you can't see. Yeah. And they're like, ah, yes. what is, you know, it's even now like emotional, <laughs> mental illness has just been identified in Nigeria. It wasn't a thing. As at then, that's why I, I never thought of therapists. Yes. Like, ah, go and see a psychologist. Yes. Everybody would just be like, ah, pray to God. It is well. It mm. is, you know, it was just too spiritual. But meanwhile, it's a mind thing. Mm. It has moved from the spiritual states. Mm. It's a mind mm. because I have a soul. And the body, you know, so the mind is actually where the whole battle is, where yeah. you are fighting through, you know. So you just speaking now, because you didn't even have the language to know, understand what was happening to yes. you. Yes. There was no framework, there was no precedent. Nothing. You, you didn't know what to do. So it's just now as you began to see a professional, yes. as you began to try to deal with yes. this. Yes. I'm now getting to see that, oh, these are these things. And that's why I'm really so particular about the girls. Yeah, yeah. And I don't want him to continue to do this, do this to other women. To and other women. I know that you, some, some of your friends and people around you are, are trying to set up an organization, a, a project, I don't know what it is yet, um, on Broken to help other women who have dealt with this kind of abuse. I mean, if you do this, you will be taking on why, why haven't you dealt with enough already? I didn't plan for it. Mm. But what's life if you can, the things you go through, if you can help others with it, mm. you know, it's not like you're there for yourself alone. Mm. You've walked through things. Like I tell my husband sometimes, like if we all can be truthful on this earth eh, and be open to one another about our stories, healing will be like a circle. Mm. I like that. You know? We won't have to, you know, but there's so much protection, especially men of God, in quotes. Yeah. They want to be seen as the perfect being. Yeah. You know, everybody is protecting just, ah, no, I want to safeguard my space. I want to safeguard my church. It's now no more like a body of Christ. It's more like, this is my organization. This is your organization. So why do we call ourselves Christians? Yeah. So if we can't open up and use our stories to influence people, how can we actually say we want a better society? society. Mm. And if you are saying we want to take the church, you are meant to go to the marketplace, go to the world. What is the world seeing in us that mm. should make them to feel like, oh, I want I to be, be part, part of, of this? Yeah, I, went, I did want to ask that. Because I'm a Christian and, I, and, I, and, I, and I, I'm church going, church working, mm -hmm. tongue speaking, Bible well. quoting Christian, I, I know. Well. I know, and you're still you're a Pentecostal Christian, yes. so you know you are, you didn't leave the Pentecostal no, movement because of this. You no. kept trying to seek for God, yes. and you did say something that is a stunning lack of compassion from even these men and women of God. Yeah. But one of the things that people say is when you say something like this about a man of God, they say, you know, you, you shouldn't destroy the body of Christ, <laughs> you shouldn't destroy the church you know don't disgrace the church and all of that and i've heard people say that about yeah. you on social media yeah or not about you but about timmy yeah. when he talked about this what do you say to that <laughs> it's just that's nigerian christianity i don't know how to put it yeah when you have personal relationship with god you get to see that god doesn't have any favorites mm. Mm. This so-called grace, grace that we keep talking about, mm. the grace doesn't work in a particular situation and mm. it leaves another situation. Mm. Mm. When the veil tore, everyone mm. can just enter As and approach Bible, God. After the, yes. after the death and resurrection of yes. Christ. So, no more like, pastor needs to lead. Yes, yes. That whole touch not my anointing. Yes, it's not, it's not applicable. Mm. Because if you look at it, every church still has like their um, decorum, more like mm. ah, this is how we do it in mm. this church. Mm. This is the spiritual, like the levels, like this is how leadership works. Grace is not applicable in those leadership levels. When someone does something wrong, 
you point it out that oh this thing you've broken the protocol in church you've done this they discipline the person so why is it that when the man of god now does something wrong you, to, you put grace in place yeah. You know, so I see There's imbalance. Yeah, There's exactly. Exactly, because I'm a practical person. Mm. That's how my life has turned out to be. Mm. Mm. So mm. I, I hear less words and see more actions. Action. Yeah. So and the action isn't making sense. And the action is not making any sense. It's remarkable because you did say something about him. After this happened, he talked to you about grace. And I do remember that when we heard the World House story, you know, the entire play around town was... A higher level of grace was yeah. what he said to her yeah. and that wasn't a rape story that was a a, a power imbalance story mm -hmm. a bit you know you know as for some people more f forgivable yeah. <laughs> but it's a trend obviously yeah. after doing this to you he, he did say to you that he according to you was covered by grace yeah like grace he's always been the grace um, preacher yeah right yeah. from time you know so it's just Mm. It's left for um, it's the body of Christ and the so-called men of God that are meant to sort of take care of the flock. People. Would they sit back and keep watching people fall aside, fall, and you keep saying, "Ah, we are protecting the body. We don't want anything to come out." When Timmy spoke out last year, Timmy spoke out this year, not just about about the lives that he's allegedly building destroying by rape, you know, seeking the attention of girls under yeah. 18 and all of that, has built on... And even marriages that is destroying. Oh, there's that. Yes. yes. I mean, there's that. So, yes, of course, you I know, saw some even, of those charts. Even marriages. Yes. yes. Because yes. you're sleeping I mean, with other people's wives and, you know, it's, it's a whole lot. So, it's not really looking like it's a weakness sort of yes, anymore. Looking, yes. I'm, I'm just because... Since that happened to me, yeah. it was just like my life just Turn. turned around. And so the same thing must be happening to other people as well. And I don't know where Have they are now. Has he or any of these pastors who promised to help out? You did say that a pastor Wally mm -hmm. said we need to pray for him. Mm -hmm. You know, and said I was going to live and there's this guy called yeah. Flo and yeah. all of these guys. And since Timmy has spoken up to say, no, lives have been destroyed. Have any of them reached out to say, we're doing our best, you know, we're sorry. Nobody. You know, nothing. Nobody, nobody. Everybody sort of just keeping mute. Unfortunately, the um, Pastor Wally Shreton's wife used to be our friend. Right. Myself and my sister were the right. ones that took her to Koza. Right. And it's something like she knows you know mm. and she knows i must say she has a story as right. well so if you right. know there are people that you, you have so much information Listen. and and then you you're seeing them you used to believe in them i i thought they were they were really firm like so this is not a building problem alone yes. this is an institutional causa problem pastors at the top of the hierarchy at causa and their families, and their wives, and their friends, as far as you know, are aware yeah. that Biodun is predating on young women, yes. on women in the church, yes. and on married women. That's what yes. you're saying. Yes. They know. They know. And they've done and said nothing. You know, there's even something about, it's not possible that you are the only one that stories keep coming out. So stories keep going oh, everything oh. is always directed towards you yes. once they mention a pastor in abuja did this mm. everybody's face turns to koza yes. yeah. why that's really why not <laughs> sorry i'm not a pastor i'm not evangelist anything but i just think it's time that men of god need to just sit down and see it's like what's gonna happen what is going to happen these girls are waiting to see what are you people doing? Do. What are you going to do? How are you going to take the measures? They might not be able to talk. They might mm. not have a voice today. Mm. But you don't know what will happen tomorrow. Mm. Mm. Few years ago, I did not have a voice. Today, I'm learning to have the courage to yeah. be able to have a voice. Mm. Mm. You don't know where their destiny lies. Mm. You don't know what's going to happen to them. Um, yeah. So 
It's, um, so you're speaking here on behalf of those who could not speak. Yeah. And you're trying to say, thus far and no more. Yeah. This needs to stop. stop. You do know that he's going to respond. And if his church members, as you've seen on your social media, Timmy's social media mm -hmm. page, don't believe it or say it. I, I think one of the most fascinating things I read in those responses yeah. was people saying, oh, she was dating him. And I'm like, well, as a pastor who is married, he's not supposed to be dating yeah. her. Yeah. Especially if she's below be 18. Also something that, so we, we've, you've established that the church knows. Yeah. Surely his wife must know. Or what do you think? I do remember that in, in, in the, in the, in the, during the break, you told me about when, when, you, when he tried to apologize, he told people to leave the house oh, yes. so his wife doesn't know. So oh, yes. He when, to protect when his myself wife. and when my brother took me to his house yes. and he saw That's us, why he said you should go so, to your own Yes, house. please. That's uh, delay is inside. We will be please, please, right. please. I don't want delay to know. That's more delay his wife. Yes. And so does that, does that mean his wife is not aware or cannot possibly be aware of any of these things? Because she's in I, a position. I, I really don't believe that she's not aware of the things going on. Mm -hmm. Maybe she doesn't have the full story. Mm -hmm. That might be possible. But I know she's aware of a particular girl. She was suspended because pastor wanted to actually come into her house and you know she insisted what are you coming to do what are you coming to do yes yes, yes yes that's you know so how was she aware of that the the lady went back to church right because and she told um the ministers right. she told pastor daily knew so it was more like a, an allegation Right. My husband, this, you know, even sort of took it to um, Pastor Biodun's spiritual father, right. as at that time, right. you know, and they ended up suspending the lady. They suspended the lady? Yes. So, it's really, it's questionable, all these things, yes. you know. There, there's something that's not right. Yeah, something And if all right. of these things are happening, and all these things you say are true, mm -hmm. and... The pastors know, his wife probably knows, ministers know, you know, church members know, the ones who are defending him on your site, on your on Timmy's Instagram page because he was just having I believe the wife knew affairs. what happened to me. You I believe the wife knew what the happened wife to you? what happened to me, I believe so. So what is the hold that he and other people have over people that they cannot just either speak their truth or step away? It's really hard to say mm. because someone stands on the pulpit, mm. you know, it's more like it dishes out good word. And it changes people's lives. Yes. Because the, the, because the word coming out is, yes. is fantastic, yes. you know, it's mind blowing. Yes. But um, mm. the life is different. Mm. You're, you're really affecting the vulnerable people. Mm. You're affecting them in a in a devastating way. So it's more or less that's why I know people always say, "I uh, live men of God." Mm. Just listen to the word of God, their mm. lifestyle, you know. But then, if you know you have an issue like this, mm -hmm. there has to be measures. Yeah. You know, there has to be checks. Yeah. Yeah. If something keeps going on consistently, don't yeah. tell us like we are helpless. Yes. Yes. It feels like we're helpless, we and people will still send their children there. Yes. People will still allow their wives to go there. Yes. Families will still go there. Yes. Don't let it be like the body of Christ. Is the, the church is a place that we have anything no solution. Goes. Yes, anything goes. And you know, it's not just the church. I remember talking to you and telling you that many years ago, you know, I had um, um, a relationship. I was telling you this story yeah, you did. with a person who was working on my team. Yeah. And it was a proper relationship. There yeah. was nothing. There was no. It was bare. Adults. There's no question. Yeah. And then years later, when I began to discover about power dynamics in relationships, I found that when you are a boss, are this not. is not a church. When yes. you are a boss, you exercise power over people. And when I realized that, I called and I apologized. Yeah. So you're talking about the church, but this is not acceptable. Yeah. Even outside. Church. The church. And so you the see. church should be held to a higher standard. Yes. Because more or less they already, and you know, the church is even sort of like spiritual. Yes. 
and you know like nigerians everything and spirituality everything spiritual, oh yes. man <laughs> like if he says die you die yeah. if he says go you mm -hmm. go you so know that fear that fear you it's know that fear. and it's also part of not understanding the revelation of who you are really yes. in christ yes. that people need to wait for one man of god to pray Tell over them, them to do something yes. you can actually talk to god and god will listen to you without yes. you even talking to any man of God. The Bible says in the book of James, if anyone lacks wisdom, let him ask from God, God. who gives to all men liberally yes. and upbraid it. Not. not. Thank you so much for sharing this story courageously. Yeah. And I look forward to the work that you're going to be doing to help other women who are facing these challenges. God will help me. God I, will help I don't you. know how I'm going God to do it. You. Yeah. You are his anointed. God will help you. Thank you.